Now the first step in changing a water pump out, you have to remove that bottom guard, which I have it off right now on this car. And there's like five or I don't know how many bolts, maybe six, five, um, eight millimeters and five, four or 5.5 millimeter bolts. You want to access the uh, drain plug, which is right here on the pat, uh, driver's side of the front of the radiator. And, you know, basically get out as much fluid as possible. All right, your first step you want to do is remove loosen up them four bolts for your power steering pump which is a 13 millimeter socket before you take your serpentine belt off. Next step you have your tensioner pulley there you got a 15 millimeter wrench you put on and then put a bigger wrench on top of that just make damn sure it's uh, in there good and you basically pull it towards the front release tension on the the serpentine belt. You drop your serpentine belt off. After that you want to take your alternator off. I think there's one, two, three, four bolts. You take this bracket off here which is it's not too bad but unplug your little plugs and leave the hot wire probably plugged in and you can set your alternator to the side. Alright we got the alternator out next step is we're just gonna take this idler pulley off and then that tensioner down here off and let's pop this off and I'll show you how you take that off. Alright for that tensioner you're gonna use a quarter inch allen screw. I do believe it's a hex head in there but I know this this quarter inch will work long as you got it, got it all the way in, and a ratchet, and you just basically run it out, and that'll pop off. Yeah, it's a hex star, but quarter inch worked on it. This is the tensioner. Next up, take your water pump pulley off. Them should already be cracked loose before you take the serpentine belt off. There's the pulley. Now once that's out, I'm going to try to get the camera down in there. You're going to take this bracket off for the power steering pump, that bolt right there, which will pull, then you can unscrew that, and you're going to take that bracket off, and your crankshaft position sensor, the bolt's there, and then we should be able to start unbolting this water pump. Okay, I got all the brackets off for the power steering in that side. Pulled the crankshaft position sensor cable and the water hose going to the pump, as you can see there. Look how damn corroded that pipe is. It's ready to fall apart, so let's go ahead and take the pump off itself now. We should be able to access all the bolts. All right, there's 12. 12 bolts that I took out and I'm about ready to I tapped on the metal part of the uh, pulley on the water pump to break it free I'm gonna pull it off and we're gonna see what it looks like Tell me what was wearing out and not let me uh, get any water pressure when I was idling. When I'd rev it up, I can't even believe that I uh, was able to keep driving this vehicle. So now we're going to go ahead and get the gasket and everything on and put the new pump on. Pretty wicked. Hopefully everything is good to go in there and it looks like it is. Got to clean that gasket material all up, completely off. Don't mess up the side of the block at all when you're scraping that clean. And we'll go ahead and put the new one on. And then next step, get some silicone, put
put a very thin layer on your pump side and then you'll put your gasket on. Don't skimp out of silicone. I have some actual stuff made for water pumps, for water pumps and thermostat housings. Like I said, don't put too much on. Very thin layer of silicone on the gasket maker and then go ahead and put your gasket on. Okay, once you got the gasket maker on both sides, go ahead and get this down in there and watch how you putting it in there not to bump it get it placed in and then start your bolts back in now for the big one once you got all 12 of your bolts back in and they're all tight <clears throat> go ahead and put your water in after you hook that hose back up and see if you got any leaks right away but if you get everything clean and took your time and Torqued everything to spec and it should be no problems. Alright, the uh, water is full, cap is on, and everything's looking good. I have see no leaks anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting everything else back together. Put the tensioner on and the pulley on and an alternator on, and we'll be good to go. Alright. I have everything back together, all brackets, bolts, pulleys, everything, alternators hooked up, full of water. I double and triple checked everything. So we are now going to attempt to start it and see if uh, everything's good to go. Alright, got it running, everything looks real good. We'll go take it to a drive and see how it goes. Got that water pump in and the temp gauge is just climbing. I already have tremendously hot air, even at idle I did. And if you're experiencing these problems like this with a Ford Taurus or a Mercury Sable, like 95 to 99, yeah your heater core is probably plugged, but I'd say the biggest problem you're gonna have is that water pump is either on its way out, the impellers are getting bad or they were as bad as like mine to where you'd have to run it up to 3,000 RPM just to keep the motor from overheating. My, mine gradually started getting like that and my guess that's what blocked, uh, ended up making the heater core not function the way it did and deposits in there to begin with. But uh, it's a very cheap fix, I probably got $35 would have fixed the problem. So, there you go. I hope this helps.